Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to our tutorial series. Last time we learned how to use the vertex manipulation tool. Uh, today we're going to look at the surface properties window here under the that comes up when you choose the texture application mode because there's a lot of different things in here. So we'll just skim through. Nothing too difficult, but it's stuff you should know. So let's actually start off by putting our vertex manipulation knowledge to use here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at a different way to handle rails. Uh, we tried uh, originally to have the corner, the intersecting rails meet at an angle like this, but we're going to change that up. And instead, instead of relying on a mass texture for the corner posts, we're going to do something uh, a little different. We're going to actually put some solid blocks for the post. So I went into vertex manipulation mode and I'm just removing these pointy angles here, making them flat. And then we're going to just take a block for the post like I mentioned. So we'll go into the texture browser and I'm going to find this red texture called 50s door 3B. And we'll just draw one right here. Perfect size. Let's put that there. And then we'll go ahead and do that to the rest. And then in addition to that, I'm going to, I have texture lock off. I'm going to copy these into place. Make copies of these posts. One there. Actually, we can start with this one and go this way. And just like when we created the rails, I'll just copy this section. So zooming out, panning across, dropping it here. Okay, so we're going to have three there. Hold down control. Oops, not that wall. There we go. And I'll drag that down, use this uh, flip vertically button up there, and pop that into place. Okay. Now the thing I want to do is, let's grab this floor texture, and we're going to make a ramp coming down from the this, this second level here. Let's enhance this a bit. There we go. And let's come, let's do about this size and see how that works. So I want to get the side view. Maybe even make it a little longer. Okay. All right, very good. Now I have the block size I want and I'm going to use the vertex manipulation and bring that down. And I have a ramp. Now just to align it with the texture, I think I'm going to make it a little wider and that should be good. And then let's copy this texture here. And then what else can we do? Let's bring this down here. And then I'll also take one of these and move it right here. And then the rail is overlapping. I'll slip that over there. Okay, very good. So now we have some new geometry to work with. And let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about that surface properties window. So when you click the te texture application mode, this surface properties window automatically comes up. And we're going to be working with this fire alarm a little bit just for an example. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see how the texture repeats itself. All right, first thing I want to show you it down here is this hide mask. So when I select a wall, it covers it with this red mask. And since I'm working with this fire alarm, which is already red, I can do hide mask. And I still see it selected because I have the little yellow and green axis. And, but it's just not applying that mask. So uh, now that I have this selected, we can look at the uh, scale option. So we can scale it in the X direction. So that's left and right in our case. And you see how it's getting wider. And eventually it's going to be a super wide. 
Let's set that back to one. You can enter any value in there and enter. Same thing with X. We can scale it up, make them tall. Enter. Okay. Now let's close out of here. I want to show you this scale lock. I know we looked at texture lock and we'll look at that again, but this says this SL stands for scale lock and that's toggle texture locking for scaling. So let's, I'm going to undo all the way back until I get that original fire alarm. Okay, so what I need to do is enable both the texture locking and the scale locking. And now when I stretch it, the texture is going to maintain this, the proportion to the shape it was. So if you have something that you need to make bigger or smaller, that's the easiest way to do that. Super convenient. Okay. So let's, uh, let's turn those off and go back to what we were doing. Alright, so the next is the shift, and that's just moving it without stretching it. So we can move it left or right. We can move it up or down. Easy enough. Then down here we have justify. To show you really what's going on here, I'm going to turn on this toggle here. This is called show hide texture tiling. So we got the texture tiling toggle on here. And you can see it just draws lines wherever the texture begins and ends. So that'll just help you understand what justify does. We have L for left, R for right, B for bottom, T for top, and C for center. So if I hit left, it just aligns it to the left. Right does the same, top and bottom. We also have center, it kind of evenly spaces it in the center. And then we also have fit, which stretches it to the size we of the block. So I'm going to hit reset on that, puts everything to scale back down to one, puts shift down to back to zero and it puts uh, rotation to zero as well. So rotation is going to be the rotation degrees. So if we want to rotate this, kind of behaves just like we expect. We can go the other way, hit reset. We also have some presets down here under the justify. So if we want to do 90 degree angles only, we can do that. Well, we also have 45 degree angles and 60 degree angles. So I'll reset. So let's turn off the texture tiling and we'll look at what we also have this align section here and that's a little bit diff difficult to understand at first but I can show you an example. So we have this section of the wall and this section of this wall that it's at an angle. It mostly is really involved with angles so I'm going to click here, turn my mask back on. Now if I were to hit world, you see they got kind of thicker because it's the distance from here to here, if you can see, is about the same dis is the same distance between four posts here. So that's why it stretches it out as four posts. But if I go back to face, you see I have uh, approximately five posts in length. We'll align the texture on it ba uh, based on its actual length, where world more of aligns it with fa faces around it. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but if, if it's not working the way you want to, you can always switch that until you have a better looking texture. Next we have this treat as one. So if I were to select this one and another one, now I have multiple textures selected. I can do treat as one and that way I could, for example, fit or reset or I could scale them all together. Down here I have our texture groups and these are just your WAD files. So if you wanted to search just the Zen textures, you could do that. The current texture is going to show you your most recent textures as well. And all the textures below. Browse, of course, is our texture browsing win window. Uh, something I didn't talk about before is you can click this only use textures. So this is going to show us all the textures that we have currently in use in the map. We also have this animate textures. So if I pull up, so I type in plus one, 
you'll see that now that this window is going to show you what these textures look when animated. So that's kind of cool. So let's go back into use textures only. And if I were to select a texture from here and hit mark, it says 48 objects marked. I close out of the browsing window and you see it's selected all the faces with that texture. So I'm going to close out of that. Let's go back in. Replace. I know we looked at replace before, but it's got some additional things we can explore here. So, so if I wanted to find, for right now we have everything, but if I was going to say select a bunch of textures or a bunch of faces and then replace, I could find based on only the marked objects. And then I can include hidden objects too. I can do do not replace. So if I do replace in everything, make sure and click on do not replace textures. Now this is grayed out and I can hit OK and it's going to find 48 objects marked again. So it's another way to do that. I also have an option to modify texture scale by factor. So if I was going to replace with a texture that was say smaller and I wanted it to be the same size, I could j jack this up and it would and it would scale up the texture. Down here where we have mode, this is how to change what the mouse buttons are going to do. So lift means it, once I click on something, it puts it as my current selected texture, that's what lift is. Versus select is just selecting the surface. So you see how it turns it red? So if I do lift and select, I've both put this texture into my current texture as well as selected the surface. So if I wanted to do only one of those at a time, I could change it here. Uh, I could set it so that it applies texture only. So let's do this one. If I click here, it applies the texture. Doesn't select the face. Doesn't put it into the current texture. These work the same. They just copy over the values and axis and values. Null to selected works like this. Puts this null texture. What a null texture is, is makes it basically invisible when compiling. So any, so a, a reason I would want to use that is, for example, let's say I don't ever imagine that the player is going to get up here. I could apply the null texture here. And you've probably seen it in maybe Half-Life 2. They use it a lot where you get up into high spaces and there's no ceilings or anything. So this is uh, two less faces that the game engine has to render. This one works in reverse. So if I was going to click on, say, this one, you see it added it to every other face. And then finally, we have a line to view. Let's say I'm looking at the top of this fire alarm block from this angle. And then I'm going to pick a texture to apply. Let's say, let's say this exit sign here. When I click onto the surface, you see it applied the texture at the angle that I'm viewing it. So this comes in handy if when you start building like curved pathways and you want the textures to align with the curvature of the pathway, this would be a benefit to that. Okay, so now let's um, let's undo everything we changes we made here, and let's go ahead and put this to use. Okay, so now let's see if we can align. Let's change this back to lift and select. And let's see if we'll just align this center. That looks, um, so I don't want this post here. So let's do a line right. Let's do a line left. And now we can move this. We can shift this one like that. Do you really get it where you want to? I think that's good enough. Maybe we could even do, give it a post on the left hand side. No, we'll just do, just do center. I can align it like that. So good. That's, we can do the same here. And basically, we're just going to align. I think that one's good. I don't like this, so I'm going to shift a little bit. 
And let's see what it looks like on this side. How about we try center? And that's good enough. I can do the same here. Center. That looks good. Let's fix this side. Let's do shift. I think that's good. Okay, and then we can, of course, do the rest of the other rails. So now let's put a rail coming down here. So I'm going to actually copy over this block here and put it at the end of my ramp. Okay. And then I'm going to turn on texture lock and copy this over. Shrink it down to that size. And let's try center on that. I think that's good. Okay. So now we can try out this, uh, what's called toggle texture UV coordinate locking. And now when we put this rail into shear mode, it's going to keep the texture exactly how it is. See? So let's bring that down and right there. And there, perfect. We have an awesome rail. I think I'll do center here. Good. Okay, very good. Something else we can do is if you look closely, you'll see that there's this red line from the bottom of the texture. So if we wanted to make that disappear, one thing we could do is select this texture and we could scale it up just a little bit. So we'll scale it by Y and then we'll align top. And now you no longer see that red line along the bottom there. Another thing we could do is we could take this face and rotate it so that it's the same angle as the top of the ramp. We can just go into rotation and start winding it like that till we're happy that's pretty good i think so let's shift the y coordinates down there it goes pretty good and that's the thick of it thanks for watching